talk is by Hillel Roth from Baalon University, and he's going to talk about genome-wide quantitation of A2I editing. Thank you. I think so. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as nicely introduced, my name is Hilary Roth. I'm a PhD student at Ares Levanon Lab in Bayerland University. And today, I'm going to share with you a tool and method for the uh, quantification of A2I RNA editing at the uh, uh, genome-wide or global scale. And first, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this great opportunity to uh, share our work in this wonderful conference. Um, all right. So a little bit about A2I editing for those of you who are not familiar with it. So we're talking about the conversion of uh, adenosines into inosines, uh, which are then interpreted by the cellular machinery as guanosines. Uh, this is actually catalyzed by a protein family called ADERs. In humans, you have three main types. The, the first one is ADA1. You have two isoforms. Uh, the first one is constitutive of P110, and it is constrained to the cellular nucleus. And the second one is interferon-inducible, and can shuttle between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. The second type of ADER in human is ADER2, which is also constrained to the nucleus, and it's mainly active in the central nervous system and uh, blood vessels. Uh, third type is ADER3. It's mainly expressed in the central nervous system, but it has no known catalytic activity, and is presumably involved in the regulation of editing. So editing changes the sequence of the RNA, so obviously it can affect the sequence of the protein, either by changing the codon or by uh, canceling a stop codon. Um, it can affect splicing if it happens at a splicing consensus elements. It can also affect uh, regulation by uh, the editing of microRNAs, for example, both the seeds and the targets. The, uh, to, the editing can prevent the creation of circular RNAs. Uh, but the foremost function of editing in the cell is actually to prevent the activation of the cellular innate immune system by endogenous double strand RNAs. Um, the uh, cellular innate immune system we're talking about is the MDA5 MAVS pathway. And uh, by editing, other actually inactivates this. Uh, sensory pathway. Okay, so if you focus on editing in humans, uh, most of the editing, over 99% of the editing activity happens within uh, allo repeats in humans, uh, where you have almost all of the adenosines in the over a million insertions of allo repeats into the genome um, edited. However, the average rate is very low, uh, less than half a percent, meaning that when you have a typical RNA seq in your hands, you're basically looking at a random fraction of the mismatch sites, and you can't just do a straightforward calculation of the rates per site. So in order to overcome this and actually quantify editing accurately at the global level, um, we use a method called uh, index. We take all of the uh, observed, presumed editing mismatches over the whole genome, all the allo repeats, and we divide this number by all of the observed adenosines, both canonical and uh, mismatch, or presumably edited in these regions. Uh, yes, you get a number which represents the weighted average of editing cross all allos in the genome. Um, it's a very uh, presumably simple way to do that. Uh, we count um, the mismatches. We still, in most data sets that are not stranded, we don't know which strand to choose to quantify per region in the genome. Um, we then exclude no noise, such as SNPs, low quality mismatches, and it's, et cetera. And then for each region, as I said, we want to decide what strand we count um, to improve our signal. So the way we found out the best way to do this, and we actually tried several approaches, was to go first according to ref segmentations and to fix the strand to match the parent gene that, is, that has the highest likelihood to be expressed in sequence. So we prefer strands with exons over introns over intragenic regions. And um, when you have um, a, a allo repeat, we, which doesn't have any annotation on both strands, we go according to the strand that is supported by the most mismatch sites. So if you have more A to G mismatches, we choose the uh, sense strand F. And if we have more T to C, we choose the antisense one. And actually, after we do that, we can sum up for all the regions, and we get a single number that represents uh, the editing in the sample um, and weighted average of it across all hours. 
Okay, so we tested our strand deciding method uh, using a stranded data set, and you can actually see that the values correlate beautifully. And even when you look at absolute values, so the deviation between using the stranded information from the sequencing and our strand deciding method, um, the values don't differ by much, less than 5% typically. Okay, um, we wanted to test our index uh, effect, the effect of three technical conditions on the index. Uh, first of all, coverage. So we took a 30 samples uh, test set from the GTEx project from three tissues. Um, a tissue that is supposed to be highly edited, the brain, a lowly edited muscle, and someone, some tissue we thought was, would be intermediate, uh, whole blood. Uh, so we got 10 of each, and we simulated coverage variations by subsampling uh, the BAM files. So you can see here in blue the index is depicted, and there isn't much variation. This is actually bound, and even when you have tenth of the original BAM file, um, you have a variation that are less than 5% in each direction of the original um, signal. But if you compare that to a different approach of trying to quantify editing, um, this one is the number of observed A to G mismatch slides. You can see that the, this number actually behaves almost as a linear function of the coverage. So we get a much, a, a very robust measure uh, compared to different approaches. And this is actually very important, especially when you want to compare uh, different data sets or to overcome batch effects. Okay, the next, condition, the next condition we checked was read length. So we took our test set and we trimmed the reads to uh, simulate shorter read length, and this is due to the fact that shorter reads are harder to align. Um, you can see the effect here as we get shorter reads, um, each color here represents a different length, um, you can see that we get a lower overall signal of editing due to the reason I mentioned before. But you, you see that the rank is preserved, and the correlation is almost perfect. So uh, as long as you're using the same read length in your analysis, you're still uh, you're going to get the same results. And last, we checked how would the alignment scheme would affect our signal. Uh, so we took three popular aligners, high set, star, and BWA, and we actually also tweaked with the parameters of star to see if the alignment parameters can have major effect. And as you can see, the values correlate beautifully, so there is no significant effect of the aligner you use on the signal you're getting. Okay. Um, let's compare this a bit to a couple examples of alternative approaches. Um, the first of all, a very common approach these days is to take a, sub a set of known editing sites and to try to get a, a single number per sample by getting the average of them. Um, here, for example, you can see uh, the average rate uh, per sample, that's the, the x-axis, uh, across the conserved mammalian editing sites at coding regions. And you can see there's very little correlation to the actual global editing level as measured by the index, and also the dispersion here in red is much higher. Um, you might try to uh, not quantify at all the editing using mismatches, but use other expression levels as a proxy to the editing level, and we calculated uh, the index for uh, all of the GTEx tissues, almost 9,000 samples. And you can see here that in many of the samples, uh, you get either a very weak correlation or a non-significant one. So this is a very inaccurate way in most of the conditions. Um, and you can actually see that th there isn't any coherent pattern here. You can have uh, each shape here is a different aider, and this is actually the uh, correlation coefficients. Y you can see that there isn't a single pattern, and you can have uh, tissues, uh, for example, like breast tissue, when we found good correlation with ADA1, but not with the other aiders. Uh, the test is we have good correlation to all three aiders, or whole blood tissue, where you don't have any real correlation with any of the, uh, the aiders. So, this is not a good way to uh, quantify your editing. Okay. Um, let's go back a bit to editing in the GTEx. So here you can see actually the editing levels it, that's in percentages uh, in the GTEx project. This is almost 9,000 samples. And we found out some stuff we were expecting to find, such as a low editing level in muscle tissue, high editing level in artery, and brain, uh, what we, uh, another thing we found here, uh, that in most brain tissues, even though you have a um, higher editing activity, uh, you have more ion signs, you have more mismatches, uh, the average level is not as exceptional as uh, we would have thought. Um, another thing we found from uh, this uh, uh, analysis, that the majority of the signal actually, even though the GTEC is a poly-A sequenced 
uh, RNA, uh, enriched, uh, poly-A-enriched uh, RNA-seq, um, the majority of the signal doesn't come from exons. It comes from introns or intergenic regions. So at least regarding editing, the majority of the signal does not come from uh, the, the coding regions themselves. Um, this is actually something we found when we tried to correlate between the global editing and the GTEx and various conditions. Um, so if you ignore the colors, for example, you'd think that there's a very strong correlation uh, between age and editing level. But this is an artifact. If you go back to the colors now, uh, this is the separation by uh, the sources or the source of the sample in the GTEx itself. So the GTEx is comprised of, you call it two distinct cohorts, at least editing-wise. Um, samples that were collected post-mortem, and samples that were collected from living patients, um, either organ donors that were ventilated, or um, and, and surgical procedures. And you can see that there is almost no overlap between them, and this is actually a non-existing correlation. If you, use, if you try to uh, get the correlation in any of the, co the, the two cohorts separately, you will get nothing. And this is actually consistent in the entire GTEx. Wherever you have post-mortem samples and samples collected from living subjects, uh, you get higher indexes in the post-mortem samples, as you can see in the regular box plots. And the notch box plots represent here uh, the living patients, and they're systematically lower uh, in, throughout the GTEx, and in some tissues, you even have almost no overlap between uh, the two groups. Last thing about the uh, things we saw straight from analysis, anal anal analyzing the GTEx is that when we look at, pay at subjects that were uh, infected by chronic, chronic viral infections, um, you get significantly lower levels of uh, global editing in ALUs. Um, in almost all the tissues except for uh, the majority of the brain tissues and the testes. Okay. So I went ahead and we tried to uh, get to find some editing regulators. So we analyzed the an SHRNA uh, project from the data set from the ENCODE project, and they have done an assay against uh, several hundred uh, double-strand RNA binding proteins and uh, some gene expression factors, and you can see here in yellow, orangish, uh, you can see the control experiments, and this is, for example, you can see when they knock down ADA, you can see we got ADA1, we got almost uh, not, no editing at all, and these are actually the genes that came out as affecting, significantly uh, affecting the editing. When you have knockdown of them, the editing uh, goes up, uh, these uh, five genes, and since there are no, not many uh, biological replicates in this data set, we actually intersected the results from this analysis from, uh, with re linear regressions we computed uh, over the GTEx project using the indexes we calculated uh, before, and we found out three genes that were significant in both analysis, marking them as good candidates to be uh, global editing regulators. So you can see them here plotted, uh, their expression level on the y-axis plotted against uh, the editing index, the global editing level on the x-axis for all three genes. You can see this is a very nice regulation. This is a, the testis tissue. Okay. Um, so now, you all, not all of you are working on human models. You, you want to expand the model to work on different organisms. This is a very easy to use tool. We, we built a program that you input to a BED file, a BAM file, and it actually uh, outputs a CSV file with the number that represents a global editing level in your sample. So how do you expand this to other organisms? Uh, we actually have done that for a marine model. So we took um, RNA-seq of mice, and what we did was to check in on all of the uh, uh, retro elements families that w had more than 10,000 insertions into the mice genome, uh, into the mouse genome, we looked where we have a good signal of A to G, here represented in the orangish dots. Uh, other mismatches are all the other colorful colors at the bottom. And you can see that if you look at, at the repeats that we knew or were expected to find editing in, uh, like B1 and B2, you find high. Uh, signal of editing, especially compared to the other type of mismatches. And when you look at places where you don't find, want to, where you don't expect to find editing, uh, such as lines or LTRs, you find a very low level, which is actually uh, swallowed by the background noise. So you take the repeats that you found to be, uh, to have a good signal, clear signal, and you use them for your index, and this can actually be done and is being used in our lab currently for other organisms as well. Okay, so I would like to sum up. Um, first of all, the index provides a simple, accurate measure for global editing levels. It is robust in regard to coverage, uh, length of the reads, 
and your alignment. And you can use it to uh, measure editing in any other organism you want in the exact same way I showed you before. It is available online. The work is currently uh, submitted and under revision. And last, I would like to uh, thank uh, my, the sponsor that allowed me to get here through the Travel Fellowship and to my advisor, Professor Elsa Vanon and Professor Eli Eisenberg from the Tel Aviv University, um, that, and obviously to uh, my other lab members. And thank you for listening, and if there's time, I'll take some questions. Questions? If there are no questions, let's move on. Thank you very much, Hello. Thank you.